Hi, this is Jane, Eddie Wessel. How are you? God bless you all. Um, I just wanted to share some things that the Lord showed me last night. And uh, my heart goes out for our country. And I'm just going to anoint myself with some oil first, anointing oil. Father, I just thank you, Lord, for your blessings upon us, Father God, your people. Thank you for your mercy and your grace that covers us, Lord. I pray for your mercy and grace to cover our land, Father God. And Father, I pray you awaken your bride in the name of Jesus. I just feel the Holy Spirit all over me as I'm praying. Father, I thank you. Let your Holy Spirit just cover us, Father God. In Jesus' name, let your Holy Spirit cover us, Father. In Jesus' name, as the bride of Christ, may, may we be empowered to do your good work right now in our nation. And Father, and to bring your mercy and your grace, Lord, over our land. I just want to um, share some things with you last night in the middle of the night. Okay, so let me back up for a second. Um, you know, um, since I was 14 years old, I've been asking God to teach me here to hear, to hear his voice. Because in John chapter 10, it says, my, the my, my, the my my sheep hear my voice and they follow. So we're supposed to hear God's voice. We are supposed to hear God's voice. Hi, Hannah. And um, and so um, the Lord has been teaching me ever since I was 14 to learn to hear his voice. And now I'm much older and I've gotten better at it. I'm not perfect, but God's really taught me how to hear his voice. And sometimes I have dreams, visions. I have a seer anointing. I see things. And uh, the Lord will show me prophetically what's going on. And, you know, he's given me the mantle of Jesus Christ. That's what the prophets have said. And I embrace it. And that's why I use the name Lady Jesus, because he told me. I use it because he told me. I'm not claiming to be Jesus Christ. I am claiming to, um, from what I understand, we bear his anointing. It is not us who live, but Christ who lives in us. And when we empty out who we are, and he gets to live in us. Um, so what I wanted to share with you guys today is what happened last night. In the middle of the night last night, I, um, I was sleeping. It was like two o'clock in the morning. I was sleeping and as I woke up, there was this dream that was ending and, um, and I was coming into my cognizant, uh, um, awakened state. And as I was entering into that awakened state, so it was the dream kind of became like a vision. So what I saw, you know, and it was really powerful because what I saw was um, what an aerial view, like when you, when we see Hiroshima after the bombing, you have this aerial view of the city. I saw a similar aerial view and it l appeared to be around Southern California. Okay, and but uh, but in Hiroshima in Japan, you see the explosion of the atomic bomb, and you see that that um, mushroom cloud. Well, this mushroom cloud was not there. That mushroom cloud was not over our city, or or Southern California. What it looked like was that the mushroom cloud was about to come. So we were like in a state where. Uh, hi, Shelly. Hi, Angel. God bless you guys. Thanks for joining and feel free to chime in. Um, so the mushroom cloud was not there. It was it was just an overview of Southern California. And I don't know how big the space was. It could have been a city. It could have been, um, it could have been um, like Los Angeles or a particular area. It could have been Long Beach. It could have been Orange County. I'm not sure. But it was a, it was an area, and it was an aerial view, and it was kind of like it was daytime, but it was a little gray, like gloomy. It was a little gloomy, and in the distance, I could see in the sky, like um, kind of like a little bit of orange, pink, red hue, and um, and so what I what I um, saw was that it was kind of like a doom and gloom picture. And it was, we were waiting for the, the, the bomb to land. We're waiting for the bomb to be dropped. We knew but the bomb was on the way and we were waiting for it to be dropped. And it was clearly the bomb from North Korea. Okay. That North Korea was sending a bomb 
to our area and we were waiting for it to drop okay now when I woke up from that dream it really troubled me I woke up and it was like this weight in my heart like oh no the end is here and then I picked up my cell phone and of course I pray about these things as soon as you know I'm speaking to God as soon as I sense it and then I picked up my cell phone and I googled North Korea the latest news and the latest news for North Korea uh, was that North Korea it said World War three North Korea to attack with nuclear missiles because uh, because of our effort to have our fighter planes fly over North Korea and then another article said they expect that it's going to happen on the 9th or the 10th which is their anniversary of their founding of their country or something like that and North Korea has a tendency to do it on the founding of their country so as soon as I saw that it was such a confirmation of my dream I mean here I just wake up and I've had lots of prophetic dreams in my life lots of prophetic dreams and and they usually happen sometimes they happen in a year or two years and other times they happen the same day same week within days and I'm like wow I just dreamt about that or maybe a month later so I can't tell you the time frame but I can tell you I've had a lot of prophetic dreams and the fact that I had this dream and I woke up and found the exact same article talking about exactly what I just dreamt about was was very concerning to me and the reason I'm sharing this with you, and I posted it on our Facebook page as an article because I did not have time, and you can I'll put the link on the on the um, top of this so you could see what that article is. But the point is that I am not sharing this to cause fear, and any of the prophetic words that God gives me is not intended to ca cause fear, because God clearly says that his children are protected, that he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. And we have the Psalms 91 covering over us, that we are protected as angels surround us. God promises that he's, when he shakes the heavens and the earth, that we are going to be protected. Now, I have to tell you, it was a few weeks ago, and there's a prophetic word about that um, in our Facebook page where it talks about where God told me um, Ezekiel 28.7, and then he said... Um, and which is about war that he was bringing war you know there's going to be judgment coming on our land and it was going to be war and I prophesied that you could see it I'll put that link on this video too in the description section but the point that he was trying to and then I said Lord war and he said yes war and then two days later I saw that Japan China excuse me North Korea said that we had claimed war declared war so the point is what I'm trying to say is that it's really time for us to pray. When God reveals us things through dreams and visions and prophecy, it is really because he wants us to heed his instruction, heed his warning, and as a people, get down on our knees, repent of our sin, and pray. Second Chronicles. God will forgive us and he will protect us. That is God. That's God's heart. God's heart is that none should perish. And he warns us so that we can do something about it. The best example we have of that in scripture is Jonah. You know, Jonah was told to go to Nineveh. And when God told him to go to Nineveh, he asked him to warn Nineveh of the judgment that God was sending against Nineveh. And so, but Jonah refused to go to Nineveh and instead he went to Tarshish and God had to do everything, including having him thrown off a boat, the storm, he got thrown off a boat, he got swallowed by a uh, whale and then uh, a fish. And then he, he got sent to Nineveh. Finally, he got barfed up, thrown up in Nineveh. And when he was in Nineveh, Jonah then had to prophesy to Nineveh that judgment was coming. But you know what happened when Prof, uh, Jonah prophesied to Nineveh that judgment was coming? Nineveh repented. Nineveh repented. And do you know what God did when Nineveh repented? They fasted. They threw ashes on themselves. And they just like ripped their clothes. They wore sackcloth and ashes. And they just went before God and they repented of their sin. And God relented. God relented. And he turned away the wrath. 
And you know, when God gives us judgment warnings, it is so that we would repent and we would relent and we would turn back to him and he would wipe out the judgment and he would relent and he would protect us. There's so many times in scripture, God shows us that, that when we repent, he will relent and he will protect and he will love and take care of us. And so it's really important for us as a nation. And I'm not just talking about Christians. I'm talking about Christians and non-Christians alike to come to God. And I'm not talking about, about Buddha. I'm not talking about Krishna. I'm not talking about Allah. If you're going to go and pray to those, just expect the judgment to get worse. I'm sorry, but God will get offended because the first and second commandments are thou shalt have no other gods before me and that uh, you can't make any idols. That's God's word. Okay, so if we go and exalt these false gods as gods, God's just going to get more upset. We don't want to do that. Watch Bali. Bali's volcano is going to erupt any day because they've been, they've been praying to um, the Hindu gods. And God's not, God told me the other day, he's not going to heed their prayers. He's not going to answer their prayers because they're burning incense to a false God. So anyways, but us as the United States of America, we're a Christian country. We're a Judeo Christian country. Let us get on our knees and let us fast and pray before the Lord and ask him to have mercy on our country, to give our president wisdom and to calm um, this Kim Jong-un, the president of North Korea, and turn away this judgment and this violence that's coming against our land. If we as a people can rise up and pray together and repent, and what we have to do is we have to repent of our sin, you know, acknowledge our sin before God. And I will tell you, there's a lot of sin in our country and I'm not here to judge you. I'm not judging you. I'm just saying the word of God says that abortion is a sin. The word of God says adultery is a sin. The word of God says fornications, living together, sleeping together before marriage is sin. The word of God says no fault divorce is sin. God, the word of God says that uh, uh, homosexuality is sin. It's all sin. We have adjudicated all of these things into law. God, the word of God says idolatry is sin. And so all of these things are sins as identified by God, not by me. I'm not here to judge anybody. I, but, you know, I'm a lawyer. I look at these laws all the time. And, you know, all the laws reflect sin. A lot of our laws reflect and protect sinful behavior. We just had um, last, in the last couple of weeks, you know, there was, a, there was an issue up north in Northern California where uh, a teacher had taught her uh, five-year-olds five-year-olds in kindergarten about uh, being transvestites and that you get to pick between whether you're a man or female or female. Are you there? Okay, sorry. What happened was uh, my alarm came off for our prayer time. Anyways, um, so this, the fifth graders, uh, fifth, five-year-olds were being told that it's okay to be male or female. And the school board, the school board looked at it. And when the school board made a decision, they said it was okay to teach that curriculum and ordered that curriculum for kids in their school, five-year-olds. If you don't think God is gonna get upset about that, I mean, he told me the other day that wickedness is covering the earth. He said that wickedness is all over the earth. And I'm not saying this to judge you. This is God's judgment. I'm just the mouthpiece, okay? I'm just the mouthpiece. I'm just telling you what the Lord told me. And I'm telling you that God is not pleased with that. He's not pleased with the sins in our country. And he, and he told me when I was driving around the nation, he said, tell them to return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord. God says, come back to me and I will come back to you. God says, love me and I will love you back. You know, God loved us first. He sent us his son, but we've rejected his son too. And we're going in our own wicked ways and doing our own thing. And we're sinning against the Lord. But if we repent of these sins and ask God, yes, I'm telling every person who struggles with homosexuality, please seek out the Lord and help him deliver you from the strongholds in your life. He will set you free. He will set you free. You can ask my friend Judah, his testimony is there. God set him free. But the reason he can't set him free, you free right now is because you have to engage your free will. 
You have to engage your free will. There is only one thing on this planet that God does not control, and that's your free will. You have to, in your own free will, surrender your life to the Lord and allow him to do that work in you and ask him for help, and he will help you. He's a loving God. He's not here to judge you and throw you into the uh, lake of fire. He's here to help you. And if you cry out to him, and if you say, Father, rescue me, I'm struggling with this issue, God will rescue you. Every fornicator, we have every movie and TV show right now advocating and man, all of the performers and all of the twerking and all of this junk on uh, social media and, and in the media and entertainment advocating fornication, sex outside of marriage. But in God's eyes, that is sin. That is sin. We need to turn away from that sin. We have pornography that is now in the social media and media everywhere affecting our kids. Kids are watching porn. That does not please the Lord. That is an evil and wicked generation. God wants us to repent and turn back to him. Folks, war is looming ahead. And I'm talking about World War III. And I'm not worried about it because God told me I'm not going to be in World War III. It's not in my generation. That means either this war is going to stop because we repent or he's going to take me up. And I'm just saying that that is so important for you to understand. But the point is that God wants to do a redeeming work in our land. America is still on the balance. And if we repent and turn to God, God will rescue us. So if we repent, confess our sins before him. And repent means doing a 180 degree turn from idolatry, worshiping false idols, um, from um, adultery, from stealing, from lies and deception, bearing false witness. These are the Ten Commandments. Not honoring our father and mother. Adultery, not honoring the Lord of the Sabbath. There's so many sins that we need to repent of. And if we repent, God, and it's in the name of Jesus, let me tell you, we don't even get to be in the presence of God because we're so unholy unless we repent in the name of Jesus and by the blood of the cross. In the name of Jesus who shed his blood on the cross for you and I. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son Jesus Christ. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. But that the world through Jesus Christ may be saved. And you know Jesus released the Holy Spirit. We got the Holy Spirit. This is the, the oil represents the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And when we get anointed and laid hands on and prayed for, for the infilling of the Holy Spirit and we invite God in, the Holy Spirit in, he takes over. He's our friend, our comforter. He's, our, he's my best friend. I thank you, Holy Spirit. I thank you, Holy Spirit. So God wants us to do that. So the, the formula is repent of your sin, which may, means do a 180 degree turn. Rip, ask God for forgiveness. Okay, through Jesus Christ, let the blood of Jesus Christ cover you because he is the only one that gives you access into the throne room of God. And when you are forgiven and make him Lord of your life and savior of your life, you become a child of God. You are restored to God as his child, not only his creation. You're no longer a servant. You're not even a friend. You are a child of God. And as you receive Jesus, then you can ask for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Don't forget to get baptized in water for the remission of sin, according to Acts chapter 2. That's when, when you get baptized in water, you're dying to all the sin and you're resurrecting in Christ. And when you resurrect in Christ, then you go and get hands laid on and anointed with oil and you get the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And then the Holy Spirit will be talking to you on a regular basis. I'm telling you, I love it. I love it. And then so the other thing that the Lord did was he had me create. He asked me two weeks ago to make oil according to Revelations chapter 7 verse 3 to make it out of uh, um, almond oil. And so I made the oil and he said this is Revelations 3, 7, 3 seal. Okay, Revelations 7, 3 seal is where... Um, the angels of the Lord are told in the end times, and I've been telling you again and again we're in end times. We're at the birth signs of the end times, and we're moving into that season now. That's why we're seeing one thing after another, one thing after another in our, in our planet. 
Revelation 7, 3 says, it's from 7 to, to 4, actually. So verse, chapter 7, verses 1 through 4, okay? And it actually says where the God is telling the angels that are holding up the winds, okay? It says it's angels of the Lord on the four corners of the earth holding up the winds back. And they're supposed to be released to bring judgment in our, in our world, um, for the world to come to an end. And God tells the angels, do not release the winds until every one of my servants have been anointed with the, with the seal. And God asked me to make this seal to anoint people. Okay, so I have made this seal. It's called Grace Grace, Andrew Zechariah chapter 4. And to anoint this on people's forehead, because that's where the seal is supposed to be. And once they're anointed, then that means that the angels of the Lord cannot touch them in judgment. That any judgment that comes against the, the people will not be able to come against the people of God. Because the angels of the Lord will seal, see the seal and will, will not touch that person. You can find that same similar story or uh, truth in the book of Exodus where the Israelites were leaving Egypt and slavery in Egypt. And when they were leaving Egypt and the slavery in Egypt, which is very similar to what God is doing right now for his people. When, when they were leaving Egypt, the 10th plague was where the angel of death was going to come and kill every single firstborn of the Egyptian slave owners who were oppressing the Israelites. And God told the Israelites, you need to sacrifice a lamb, which represents Jesus, and take the blood of that lamb, which represents the blood of Jesus Christ, and put it over your mantle, your doorposts, so that when the angel of death comes by and looks at your doorpost, that the angel of death will realize that you belong to the Father, that you are the Lord's, and, the, and you are covered in the blood of Jesus Christ. It's a foreshadow of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross and how he died for us and shed his blood. And so when the angel of death came and it would see the blood of the lamb over the doorpost, it would pass by that house and it would only go into homes where um, there was no blood covering. There was no seal over the door and it would go in and it would kill the firstborn. And that is really how the Israelites got to escape the slavery of the Egyptians and right now the people of God the remnant are under this oppressive slavery of a very very wicked world and God is crying out for those who want to come to him to come to him in the name of Jesus Christ that's every single person every single person can come to know Jesus Christ through the, through the blood of the Lamb and accepting Him by faith, repent of their sin and turn to Him. And every single person can be covered in the blood of the Lamb in baptism and be sealed with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That seal upon their forehead. And, you know, contact me if you want to be anointed with this oil. And somehow we'll make that happen. I'm in California. I, we're, we're getting people from all over the world. We're getting people from Africa, Mexico, all over uh, the United States. So, um, but I have that oil and God had me make a whole bunch of it for everybody. And so we have that oil as for, well, the Bible says for 144,000 people, you know, but the point is that God has a seal that he wants on the people's forehead so that when the angel of destructions come that God sends, they will be covered and sealed. So I just want to share that with you so that you know how to escape judgment that you know how to help our nation escape judgment and how to escape this war. Because if we pray, God will hear and he will relent. So God bless you all. I love you. This is Jane Eddie Wessel. And let me pray for you right now. Father, I just thank you. And you know what? I'm just going to put some anointing oil on my hands and reach out to you. So Father, I just thank you for your anointing. Father, your oil in Jesus' name. And, and after this, I'm going to head out to the um, ocean. God told me to pray over the Pacific Ocean by my home. So I'm going to go over there and do that in Huntington Beach area. So, Lord, I just anoint every single person, Father, in Jesus' name. I plead the blood of Jesus over them. And, Father, I pray for our country about this war. Father, I pray that the bride of Christ and those who don't know you yet will come to know you and that we will get on our knees and we confess our sins before you, Lord. Forgive us of our sin. 
of adultery, of our sin of fornication. Forgive us of our sin of idolatry and seeking false gods. Forgive us for even mammon, God, worshiping mammon, which is money. Forgive us for stealing. Forgive us for lying. Forgive us for deceiving. Forgive us, Father God, for not honoring our parents. Forgive us, Father God, for not honoring the Sabbath. Forgive us, Father God, for every one of our sins and our unrighteousness. Forgive us for our sin of adultery. Forgive us for murder, murder of the unborn and the blood of the unborn cries out to you. I just saw Jesus. I just saw Jesus. I just saw Jesus with a crown of thorns. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I just saw Jesus with a crown of thorns. Thank you, Jesus. He, he died for all of these sins. He died for all of these sins. Jesus, please forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of our unrighteousness. Please let our nation turn back to you, God. Please, God, and please, Father, help us um, turn, be a godly America. Help us be a Christian America once again, a Judeo-Christian America, your people chosen by you for your purpose in Jesus' name. And, Lord, I pray we would tear down our altars to false gods, that we would uh, stop. Oh, forgive us for our pornography and our perversion. Forgive us for our homosexuality, God. Forgive us. Forgive us for allowing gay marriage. Forgive our pres last former president. Who uh, who put um, places to pray to Allah in the White House and the and the gay uh, colors, Lord, the rainbow, the rainbow belongs to you, Lord, but it was misapplied and the gay flag was put on our nation, Father God, uh, supporting gay marriage, which violates you, Father God. Forgive us for our rebellion. Forgive us. Help us turn back to you, Father God. Forgive us, Lord. I ask you to forgive us of uh, of the pornography in Jesus' name. Forgive us of our abortions, Lord. Lord, forgive us for the multimedia, Father God, where in all these forms of media we're allowing pornography and witchcraft. Forgive us for our witchcraft and our manipulation. Forgive us for abandoning the fatherless. Forgive us for allowing divorces, no fault divorces, just because we feel like it, God, just because we can't get along and not honoring our covenant with you, Lord. God, forgive us, Lord. Forgive us for just like going and dating whoever we want after we get a divorce. Forgive us, God. That's just adultery, Lord. And we ask you to forgive us. Turn our hearts back to you, Father God. Help us protect our children. Forgive our school boards for um, taking Bible out of school and implementing curriculum that says you could be whoever you want to be, male or female. God, forgive us, God. Forgive us for letting the enemy take over our country and be in our schools and in our businesses and in our homes and in our marriages and in our churches and in our courts and in our laws and even in the White House in the last term. God, we thank you for a praying president, President Donald Trump. We pray you bless him and give him wisdom on how to handle this war situation. We pray that he is able to handle it with the wisdom from on high in the name of Jesus. We, I prophesy and I declare and decree over Donald Trump right now. The Lord is just releasing and anointing a prophecy over me right now. I prophesy, declare and decree over President Donald Trump. In the name of Jesus, President Trump, you will have wisdom from on high. You will have, I speak wisdom to you from on high. I just feel the Holy Ghost falling on me right now. President Donald Trump, you will have wisdom fall on you from on high that the lord is going to put divine counselors around you godly counselors around you in jesus name that you are a praying president and you're going to hear the word of the lord and how to handle this potential war, world war three situation how to handle north korea in jesus name god is going to give you wisdom president trump on how to handle this situation with North Korea, God's going to allow you to snuff it out, to snuff it out like putting out a match. God's going to give you the ability to snuff it out in Jesus' name as our people repent, as America repents and turns her heart back to God. President Trump, you are going to have the ability to Trump uh, to snuff out this potential for World War III and nuclear attack on our country. Lord, I don't want to speak anything against you, Lord, because if you bring judgment, you bring judgment, Lord. But you, I know you, Daddy. Daddy, I know you. I know my daddy. If my daddy is so sweet, if you go and tell him, Daddy, I'm really sorry for breaking your heart and sinning against you. Will you rescue me? He always does. He's such a gentle, loving father. He'll let you sit on his lap. 
You know, he's such a good, good God. So, Lord, we just want to continue praying for our president. We pray you bless our president. There's so much attack against him, Father God, whether people agree or disagree with him. Lord, we pray against Antifa right now in Jesus' name. Lord God, we pray you resolve the race issue. Lord, in our nation, God, you don't see color. You don't see the difference between black and white, God. I mean, they're all beautiful colors to you. You value every person you've created. You see the difference between people who believe you and who don't, who walk in your ways and who don't. That's the distinction you make. You separate between sheep and goats, not between black and white. Father, I thank you for that, Father God. In Jesus' name, I thank you that you are a God who loves every race. Thank you, Father God. And we pray for your healing, healing, healing in our land. We pray people will repent and come back to you. Rescue us from this threat of war, Lord. In Jesus' name, I love you, Father. I love you. I worship you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to head out to the beach and to anoint, as God told me, to anoint the Pacific Ocean with anointing oil. And I'm going to take communion there. The Lord asked me to do that. So I'm going to go and anoint the Pacific o Ocean. I don't know why. It could be we've had volcanoes in this birth times all over this nation. Every day there's another volcano popping up, which is causing earthquakes. And we have the threat of war. We've had hurricane after hurricane. And we've had fires. Let me tell you, God's coming back and he's coming back soon. So it's time for us to move in power, get on our knees and pray. God bless you all. Please do me a favor, share this video, get this video out. People need to see these videos about end times and how to respond to what's going on in our society. So many Christians get upset with me because they're like, you're talking about judgment. No, I'm telling you the truth of what God is telling me. And God is telling me to warn the people so that they will repent and return to them. This is an act of love, both by me and by the Heavenly Father. Because if the Lord just wanted to strike us dead, he could. But he has chosen not to do that. He wants us to repent and return to him. So let's all do that. I love you. Please share this video. Let's get it around to the ends of the earth so that all may be saved. I love you all. God bless you. If you want to reach me, you know where to reach me. You can reach me on Facebook. Uh, my phone number is out there too. So God bless you all. And if you want to get anointed with oil, Revelation 7-3 oil, please contact me. Um, I don't want to charge for the oil or anything. This is not about money. Our ministry isn't about money. It's about doing the will of the Father. There's, that's the only, I'm not trying to get rich. I don't care about money. I'm happy where I'm at. I'm happy where I'm at. I, I'm actually a lawyer and I kind of gave all that up to serve the Lord. If I wanted money, that's what I'd be doing. But the point is this. If you want anointing oil, I do have vials of anointing oil that I can mail out to you. You usually need someone who's filled with the Spirit to anoint you with oil and pray for you. Okay, I could send you out that oil. It does cost something to me, and I can't afford to send the world vials of oil for free right now. So if you want something, if some oil, contact me. I'll figure out what the price is. It's probably like 3 $4 for mailing. I don't know if you're out of the country. It may cost more. But I can get that oil to you so you can pray for yourself. It may, it may be the cost of $5 because it's, it's glass, so I'm going to have to put package it. So it might need to get a special package envelope. And then the vial cost us, the oil cost us, and so it all. And then we have labor that costs us. So we can get that oil to you. And a mailing, obviously, mailing is going to cost us something so that it's not broken in the mail. So all of that we can get to you. If you want that oil, it's, I'm more than happy to send it out to you. But please uh, know that there may be a cost associated with it. Um, I don't know what that cost is. Um, I think depending on where people live, it could be 3 to $5, I think. And if they want it, that's if we use regular post office. So if you want it faster than that, I don't know what UPS charges, but we can try to get it out to you. I want all of you to have it. God bless you all. I love you. And Karen Pray, hi, God bless you, Karen Pray. And she says, we all need to hear him and obey him. What does he say to us, to us, to you? Open your ears to his great love. Amen. It is God's love is great. And all of the judgment, everything is rooted in his perfect love. I mean, you just saw what happened in Las Vegas. That wasn't the Lord. The Lord wants to protect us all. He just wants to separate, separate the sheep from the goats and finish up here. So choose who you're going to serve. 
As for me and I, my house, we'll serve the Lord. But you have a choice whether you're going to believe God or not, whether you're going to believe God through Jesus Christ. There is no other God. There is only one way to the Father. We love you. God bless you and receive the Holy Spirit. Take care. God bless. And feel free to contact me and please share this video. Take care. Bye. Love you all. This is Jane checking out. Lady Jesus checking out. Kisses. Bye.